going on people welcome to the snippet podcast this is the first episode we're bringing you on our youtube channel my name's raf and my name's james and in the first episode we're going to be talking about uh rafi um even though this is going to be a, a duos podcast um uh you know that's what we're going to be doing for the future rafi's essentially going to be the first guest and we're kind of going to be speaking about um him his youtube channel the challenges he faces uh and many other things really i guess and we'll just kind of see where it goes and see where it gets us so um sounds good to me man yeah so uh i mean i guess we can kind of go through the 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 kind of the idea of snippets so like basically the idea is that we want to keep the podcast maybe below like half an hour kind of keep them short hence the name snippet um and yeah kind of see where it goes really so yeah um so Rafi welcome you're the first guest thank you very much it's a pleasure to be here (laughs) and um yeah like I suppose you can sort of start explaining a little bit about you and uh cool yeah get get your fans excited right so for those of you who don't know who I am my name's Raf I am a Pokemon YouTuber on YouTube I cover a variety of different content um ranging from countdown videos theories even playthroughs as well so if you want to see me rage you can come check it out on my channel and um they are quite entertaining to be fair because you just don't expect what's going to happen in the next moment that you're playing the game so that's something to look out for mm. um personal life just graduated from university studied computer forensics now working as YG. an it come on bro you know about that shout out <laughs> you as well grads and that um, <laughs> Currently working as a IT technician, and yeah, life is good, man. For those of you that don't know, fun fact: myself and JB have been friends since secondary school. So add that to fun facts yeah. about the Snippet Podcast duo. There you go, man. Nice. Well, um, all right, cool, man. And uh, yeah, so like, how did how did the love for Pokemon first come about then, and sort of how did that? evolve into becoming a youtuber ultimately well i think the main thing is bruv is that when you're young we all have like a passion for something for example people like for example beyblade or power rangers for me it was pokemon i remember watching the tv series back on the old squid rectangular tv and i just found an interest for it i thought it was quite entertaining i liked the way the characters were how the whole depth of the story was about seeing like these fantasy creatures on the screen and how they have magical powers etc etc um in terms of pushing it into a youtube side i remember making videos on one of the games that came out back in 2015 2016 and before that i was actually on youtube i was experimenting a little bit playing a bit of call of duty and fifa as you do um had a channel on that but i noticed whilst it was quite it was going quite good for me at the time I thought maybe I could put my efforts into something that I have more of a passion for. Not that I haven't got a passion for gaming, mm. but just maybe a franchise that I've got a lot of passion for on that I have quite a lot of knowledge on. And um, yeah. yeah, I pushed on to that. And now I'm sitting here with a pretty decent fan base, which I'm really grateful and blessed for. We've got 20,000 mm. subscribers, um, just touched over 6 million views. And yeah, that's how I came about it, really. Nice man. Do you know what's really interesting? I didn't actually know you started with uh, like Call of Duty and the FIFA stuff. Yeah, man. Oh. I just branched out. I remember back in the day when um, Black Ops Two was revealed, and then everyone was uploading gameplay about that. And I was thought, well, you yeah. know what? It's quite popular at the time. I mean, when a new COD comes out, everyone wants to try and jump on it, really. But for me, it was Black Ops Two and FIFA. And um, yeah, it just pushed out, jumped onto the Pokemon side, and here I am now. Yeah, nice man. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what happens with uh, the new Call of Duty as well. Because oh yeah, definitely Modern Warfare. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Yeah, not like we haven't had that There's name before. Be so many um, like old school players starting to jump on that again, which oh, will be yeah, really definitely. cool. We're going to have to jump on that as well then. Oh mate, definitely. <laughs> that's going to be wicked. <laughs> um, yeah, cool man. So like, uh, so for kind of any YouTubers listening out there at the moment, or people that are just starting off. Yeah. Uh, like, what what are the main challenges you kind of deal with on a day-to-day basis with uh, youtube videos uploading them Uh, maybe something like copyright strikes or anything like that or content there things like this i think the main thing i think the main challenge about being a youtuber is keeping up the consistency because for example you want to try and make sure you have that circulation and keep pushing out 
videos to keep your fans engaged and everything so what I try to aim for is at least one video a week and whilst that is still quite a challenge because I come back from work you know you're tired you've got other commitments and everything I still managed to push forward with it thankfully but aside from personal challenges I think the main big challenges nowadays is to do with copyright so for example if a YouTuber wanted to do an analysis video on like a new trailer, they weren't able, they're not able to actually upload the trailer themselves and then break it down. They'll have to take screenshots and some people can find this quite time consuming yeah. and obviously extra editing, which is understandable because you'd rather get the information out quick and clean as fast as possible. So it isn't outdated. Um, mm. There's also, of course, <clears throat> copyright infringement. You've got people stealing videos. Like recently I had a person that, actually stole content from my video i had to shut them down with a copyright strike i mean no i don't way. really like doing that stuff but at the end of the day if they're not asking for permission then i don't expect them to get away with it really because is this the same person that yeah this is the same person that we spoke about yeah, yeah. one of the same oh my God. <laughs> no back ages ago i know it's crazy thankfully they apologized and everything but obviously i had to keep the strike up because if i'd done that to them i'm sure for a fact they would have done it back to me do you know what i mean bearing in mind yeah. that this youtuber's got about four times the size of audience compared to me so that was a bit like what <laughs> you've got a yeah. bigger audience and you want to still but anyway it doesn't matter but that happened there um another challenge that i think many pokemon youtubers face nowadays is um creative block so for example coming up with ideas that is something unique because nowadays loads of pokemon youtubers well what i've noticed they tend to upload the same regular playthrough and then they obviously want to cover the latest news but if someone subscribed to five different pokemon youtube channels and they see five news videos they're probably thinking oh it's probably all the same content and only one of them is going to be clicked on whereas for example if a new piece of information was revealed then someone done like a, a theory on that which is what i tried to do i i, I started my pokemon youtube channel youtube channel off with news and then extracting theories from that news that's probably what gave me a little bit of a push at the beginning yeah, but, yeah. Um, I think that's the those are the main challenges of being a Pokemon YouTuber. In terms of YouTubing itself, I'll, I'll have to say it's consistency, um, obviously idea blocks, and maybe just sometimes motivation. Because sometimes I come back from work and I'm like, okay, I'm really pumped. And let's see if I can edit this video and get it out by the weekend. And then other days I'm just like, you know what, I can't be bothered, mate. I'll just rather just mm. chill or just like, you know, play some other games or whatever. But... um. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, yeah, man. It's, 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 like, it's a big game out there. It's a big game, yeah, it's for sure. Mm, mm. Like I was gonna, I was gonna say it was interesting what you said. The first thing that you mentioned was consistency, and it's something that I struggle with, even with um, just doing side projects yeah. Uh, yeah. at the moment. So I'm basically doing software engineering, and um, I need to kind of work on side projects to get to where I want to be to kind yeah, of get further of in my career. Yeah, and um, like th the main thing, honestly, is just it really is consistency if yeah. you can just do something small every single day i suppose it's a little bit different to youtubers because um you kind of have to focus on putting out quality content so it's not oh, yeah, so much kind of doing yeah. something every day yeah um but uh yeah like in the in the case of me it's i need to be able to be on it every single day just kind of like get that 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 grinding mentality yeah, that, that into my head you know? to keep going yeah 100 percent, yeah i agree because um if, i mean if you miss one day that turns into two days and then before you know it you're just going to be lacking what's the word um you're just going to be lacking the ethic to continue and then before yeah, you know exactly. you'll just be having massive breaks and it's not going to be healthy yeah yeah like you just start making excuses so much more like oh yeah. i've done one day you yeah know, you can, i'll you do it tomorrow or something. yeah, yeah exactly. i'm taking an extended break let's just see what happens <laughs> i'll be back <laughs> next month but yeah that's yeah, true man. that is true bro um so yeah i i would say i totally agree with you man on mm. the consistency side uh yeah, it's interesting what you said as well about like unique content as well because um, I watched a video from I'm not sure if you've seen it. You know Toby Jizzle, he done yeah. the video on like um, like where he is at the moment and stuff. And yeah, he was I saying, saw that. Yeah, yeah. He was struggling with what he wants to to do creatively and stuff, and mm. kind of like the pressures of putting out content and stuff like that. Um, and I can imagine that's like the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it could be something that you're going through as well. And yeah, yeah, yeah um, definitely. I have. I'll be know, honest. I have. Difficult. I have faced that issue and um i've tried to overcome it as much as i could and i managed to do that in a, in a small space of time recently but at the same time it's about okay i've managed to do it for this block like what happens when the next block happens how am i going to overcome it 
what my back what's my backup plan do you know what i mean but yeah yeah thankfully i've managed to motivate myself and you know thanks to you guys and everything as well so it's it's a bit of a push us going forward so yeah, yeah absolutely man. it's good man so what would you say actually keeps you motivated then you kind of said stuff about you know you could have a backup plan yeah. and um but is it is it more kind of money motivated it money motivated when i first kind of started general? obviously i wanted to do it as fun and seeing that now i still am doing it for fun because working full-time like if i wanted to push this as a full-time career i would well have to work super super hard and have a much larger yeah. audience but yeah i mean it is good to earn some revenue on the side from the work that i put in for youtube like thankfully i've managed to get signed for a couple of sponsorships as well so yeah, I'm nice, man. getting a couple of rewards from that thanks bro um of course i actually do i um people commission me for for example some gfx here and there so if they want an animated background like a moving background of a certain pokemon or like a thumbnail or something then that's that's mm. another little thing that i can do and um it's good as well because at the same time even though i am getting this small chunk of revenue it's good to see loads of people are interacting with me and they want to see more content and i mean to be honest bruv i didn't think i'll be able to have twenty thousand people watching my stuff from the beginning I thought it would just be a little thing that I do as a hobby and then that's it, grow, 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 slowly, slowly. But I had a yeah, short yeah. burst and it managed to overtake and I took a massive jump from when I was at like 4K straight to 10K. Like that was a, that was a big deal for me because I didn't think I'd be able mm. to gain 6K in about a year. But yeah, apart from that, I have to say it's the, it's the enjoyment of making content, like making videos and then people enjoying them like you know our oh, great video i want to see more of this like comments are a really nice thing i really do like the comments and seeing people like the video as well that's mm. just an indication that you know people are interested and they want to see more yeah. what about a bad one rafi what happens when you see a bad one uh, a bad comment, bad comment. You suck, Raf. Yeah. <laughs> honestly i ignore it because at the same time that's just a small minority of people hating but sometimes it back in the day it did used to get to me i'll be like oh i put so much effort into this and then you've got this one hater that's on my case and then people are agreeing with him but then i do see all of the positive side and see like all the positive comments and the likes and everything and even the views on the video that kind of like overshadows it and i kind of brush it under the carpet and just start to learn that you know what you're going to get people that don't like you. You're going to get people that are not going to like you in life in it. And it's just a learning curve, really. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah. Um, sometimes, obviously, I can retaliate in a calm and professional way. But apart from that, I just make sure I ignore it, bro. Because at the end of the day, you can't really let one person stopping you from doing something that you enjoy. So, that's yeah, definitely. Thing. Yeah, man. It's, it's interesting because, like, I saw this study the other day yeah. that was... Um, if you see a one star review on an Amazon product or mm. kind of any product uh, for that matter, um, it takes about like 10 to 15 good reviews or five star reviews or whatever yeah. to kind of get that person's attention span back on, like oh, to buy the product. That's insane. And yeah, for like a content creator as well, it must be yeah. it must be tough as well because if you see one comment that's bad, yeah. you must kind of, <clears throat> well, at least from personal experience, you kind of get one bad comment about something yeah, and it's like, oh god, you focus so much on that, yeah. but you have to realize, like you said, there's so many other people that are liking your content that you That's have nice to. Uh, you just got to remember that if you enjoy making the content for yourself, then that's one of the main things. Because I remember making a video um, about, I think it was last summer actually, or two years ago, that yeah, I was like, I really want to. I think I would like to see this as a as a viewer. So I put it out there and the feedback that I got from that was like, it was through the roof, like the amount of people that really enjoyed it as well. And what, I, what video was this? This was basically a video where I covered all of the sprite changes in Pokemon. So for example, starting from the very first old retro games in 1996, yeah. how it's developed and what Pokemon have changed their appearance over the years. That video mm. managed, that that video banged like 1000 likes and it's on like 11 dislikes. So that's probably my most successful like ratio on a video and yeah. it's nearly at 100k as well so that that was that was a that was a real boost for me because at the end of the day i spent so long researching that video putting in the editing into it and then that's that's probably one of the best rewards you know getting the good feedback from it getting the good interaction and traffic and i was happy with it bro i was happy with it yeah yeah nice man mm. cool good stuff well yes. um let's move on to the the the, the pokemon community community then like yeah. how's that is it is it is it cool so i know i know you've been like an event with other people actually yeah 
Well, the Pokemon community, in my opinion, is great. There's a lot of great creators out there. There's a lot of inspirations and role models. However, recently, the start of this year, there was a lot of controversy in the Pokemon community. There was um, um, quite a lot of sensitive content that was revealed about certain Pokemon YouTubers, and they've been, you know, been shut down for that. They've been arrested in certain situations. Um, and that's not only for the Pokemon community, it's also for the Nintendo community because obviously, you know, um, Pokemon is part of N- Nintendo and everything like that. Um, mm-hmm. Like, actually, it's funny we're, we're speaking about this, but someone from the Nintendo community actually passed away today. They took their own life because they were going through a mental illness and it was quite sad because this person. Oh, actually, was, it, was this Etika? Yeah, Etika. Yeah, it was Etika. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah, so sad, though. That was really sad, really, really sad. Mm. Like, personally, I, was, I never used to watch his videos but i would see his work around and i would enjoy it because he, he was quite a funny guy and he was quite a, an entertainer and it was just quite sad because this guy was like probably a couple of years older than us and stuff do you know what i mean mm, yeah but, yeah um apart from well rest in peace and everything but yeah of course, for man. the um pokemon community i think it's really great because there's a lot of people different ages different backgrounds different ethnicities that love this franchise and for example like the one thing that people are onto me is like, oh, you're 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 in your mid twenties and you like Pokemon. I'm like, yeah, I've got a passion for it, and it's crazy because there's people that are older than me that are doing yeah. this as their full time job, and they talk about Pokemon. So it just yeah, goes to awesome. show that there's so many different fans. It's it's incredible. Like personally, I think the community is really great. Of course, it's got yeah. its glitches and everything. You get that with everywhere, but mm. it's good to see that there are a lot of people supporting each other. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I, do you know what? Funny enough, I wanted to do a podcast later in the future about like the importance of communities and stuff because yeah. I feel like no matter what one you're a part of, it's mm-hmm. just it's, it's so important. Like us, us humans kind of thrive together as a species as being in communities and stuff. You know, we, oh, yeah, we when, when we first come out of the bloody womb, like we can hardly take care of ourselves. Like you need a freaking tribe to take care of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you it, need that. It's you need just that like support, it goes to show yeah. anything else as well. You know. Yeah, definitely. Um, I agree with you one hundred percent. Communities are awesome if you can, if you can get involved with people that are yeah you know, like minded people and people that you can look up to and stuff. I think it's it's so important, man. It's so so important. It's actually one of the best ways to network as well. And I think we were going to have a, a discussion about that shortly as well, but we'll, we'll wait until we jump on that. Well, but let's talk about it now on the, yeah, on the topic well. of communities, I guess. Like, Fair enough. <laughs> no better time, right? <laughs> what I've learned being a Pokemon YouTuber is that the community is a great place to network as well. So, for example, I've managed to collaborate with people all around well, the world, really. Obviously from the UK, America, Sweden um canada a couple of different places as well france awesome yeah it's been really good man um i've also been reached out by a couple of conventions in the past like for example i held the first show alongside a couple of other pokemon youtubers at london anime con in uh london met uni and mm. that's where we had a couple of fans we had about 50 people come and visit us we had one guy from iceland that came over to see us and that was really really cool yeah, that's amazing. But um, what, was he? A, was he a content creator or was he a fan? Uh, he was just a fan. He was just a fan. Yeah, he came over for the weekend. It was like, oh, I came to see you guys, and it was really good. We managed to engage that's with the insane, people. Man. I know. I couldn't. Be- I I couldn't believe it. Like it was really insane because to think that someone just would pay that ticket, get on a plane, and travel for the weekend just to see a couple of guys talk about some flipping digital creatures. Do you know what I mean? It's just insane. Yeah, yeah. It's mad. It is mad, bro. But, I suppose uh, that sort of stuff as well must kind of give you motivation too. Oh, one hundred percent, definitely. I mean, yeah, like, like, I don't want to bribe or anything, but I had these little kids come up to us like, "Oh, can we get an autograph?" And I was like, "The only person that's ever asked me for an autograph is flipping, like, no one." So this is a big <laughs> deal. Do you know what I mean? It was crazy. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. um, you know, they they all get excited and that they were jumping and everything. And their mum's like, "Mama oh, made it." it. Yeah, mama made it. And then like their mum <laughs> is literally right there saying, "Oh, thank you for taking a photo." It was it's a nice thing. It's a nice thing because. When I've visited conventions myself and I visit and um, interact with other content creators, I know how it feels now. Do you know what I mean? Because mm. I've, I've been a viewer, a fan, and then I've got a viewer and fan that's onto me, like trying to, you know, get a bit of attention. I'm like, you know what? Cool. I don't mind taking a photo with you. It's a nice thing. You know, it's add it to the memory and maybe next year you can come and interact with us again and stuff. But yeah, it's really good, man. It's really good. And um, I think that's one of the biggest things about being a youtuber as well is the fact that you can network with people you can open up so many more doors and other opportunities for yourself and your friends and colleagues and anybody else that you want to get involved 
and mm. um, it's 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 probably a really really nice thing that the community can do together as well. Yeah. Do you have any other things lined up in the future for meetups or anything like that? Um. Well, I'm going to be going to Summer in the City later on in August this year. That's nice. a convention where they do... It's a UK convention where they bring all the latest like Nintendo games and a lot of content creators are going there. So if anybody's out there and you want to come see me at Summer in the City, come down as well, Jay, if you fancy it, bro. If you've got a free day to kill, then you know what you to do. Yeah, yeah. when is it? It's in August um, the 8th to the 12th. So it's over the space of a couple of days. But I'll send you the details and we'll chat about it. Yeah, yeah, cool. Is, is it... Um, over a weekend as well. Yeah, it's over a weekend, bro. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm not a content creator, but like, yeah, you know, anyone's like... welcome. Anyone is welcome, honestly. As long as you have a wristband and a ticket, then that's fine. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, but, that's, sweet, um, yeah. That'd be cool. that's next in line. I've got a couple of other collaborations set up. Um, yeah. Apart from that, bro, I'm just taking it easy as it is because at the same time, I don't really want to rush this because even though I've been doing YouTube now for quite a long time. Yeah. I'm How long now? I've, well, I've had this channel for six years, but I've been mm. probably doing YouTube for about eight years. So just before when we were going during college days and stuff. Yeah. But and maybe just a bit before then year eleven and stuff. But um, yeah, man, it's it's, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, to see what yeah. we're doing it. That's that that's that's a long time as well, man. And it's just know, like it, it it goes to show as well because you've come far, right? And it's yeah. just like success doesn't come overnight. You know, you just have oh, 100%. to. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. You have to just keep on it, like what we were talking earlier about, you know, staying motivated and things like yeah, that. You definitely. just have to keep going, and there are probably times like you've experienced. I mean, like, admittedly, oh. there are some creators that you know they can make a video and then they can blow up overnight, which is understandable because they may have clicked the algorithm right, they may have discussed a topic, or they may have actually put in quote unquote clickbait or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But, we'll put KSI in the we'll, title. We'll put KSI <laughs> in the title. You know, True Jordan podcast, <laughs> but um. Oh, flipping James Charles or whatever his name is as well. Should we get those as our next guests? Yeah, we'll get them in. I'm going to speak to we'll, JJ. We'll get them easy, we'll see if we get them in. Yeah, just get some of the views <laughs> out there. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, I think that'll kind of um f- fall through into the next topic we'll talk about, like how to become a YouTuber and like any advice as well. Yeah, um, but yeah, I was just about to ask that, I guess. Mm. So you know, how if if I were to start up YouTube now or if. Uh, some other guy was who wanted to get in the the Pokemon community. What yeah. what advice would you give them? Um, well, first things first is make sure that you have um something to record with. So it could either be a laptop, phone, tablet, any device. It doesn't really matter. And as long as you have something to edit with, like there are a load of free um software online. One of the main ones that I use is Camtasia Studio. So if anybody wants to check that out, then you'll be able to find that online. Um, you could even edit your f- your footage on your iPad or your phone with the inbuilt video editor or even the YouTube editor itself that's built into the video manager on YouTube's platform so you don't have to be the best you don't have to have you don't actually have to have the best editing skills but as long as you experiment and you know if you if you're happy with the quality of the video and you want to push it out there as your starter then go for it um personally I like to script my videos as well so it's easier content to manage and on top of it you don't have to go "Mm, uh, mm, uh," all the time you can yeah. like log all your notes down and it's easier. Um, yeah. Jump on paint.net or Photoshop <laughs> for flipping Classic. thumbnail editing, like hey. literally. Yeah, man. And I, um, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say like what I would say, it, it's so important just to get your stuff out there. Like yeah. for me, 100%. this is going to be my first video that's going to be going on YouTube and it was mm. kind of a bit daunting, but... Mm no matter how bad or how good this goes or whatever yeah. you, the only way you can get better is by pushing stuff out there like yeah, no 100%, matter how bad it 100%. Is. it's it's uh, like don't have a fear for anything if you're happy with it just push it out there and you don't know what could happen like my first video was a flipping like it was like an eight minute video it's not on youtube anymore because i deleted it by accident it was an eight minute video of me recording my screen talking about a news article and then putting annotations over the screen instead of actually cutting the screen annotations off and it was just a mess but it's still mm. done all right for me do you know what i mean it was my first video i was talking about a topic and yeah, um, yeah yeah just don't be afraid to put yourself out there honestly because you may think people will judge you for the content that you make or like your interests and hobbies but there's plenty of us that like the same stuff so just go yeah, for yeah. It, honestly yeah absolutely absolutely and and because you learn by doing right well at least that's the case with me and i think a lot of other people too mm. um 
if you could just get stuff out there, do do you know what you need to do, like yeah. how bad the software is or whatever, or yeah. um, how bad your microphone is or how bad your camera is. Like you just learn by doing, and eventually yeah. you can yeah, get more you confidence just and get into equipment and exactly. And like I've got a um, friend that started on Movie Maker and they were using their flipping phone microphone to record audio and then yeah. they took on feedback they taught themselves and now they're like they're hitting full 1080p quality videos like using adobe premiere animation it's crazy you pick it up over time like personally i used to use a single screenshot and then just talk over it and now i know how to fully edit videos so yeah that's one one positive you could take out of it as well and that's the thing as well like there's no point buying like a, a thousand pounds worth of equipment and then you do what you need to do and then you don't like it and you've just wasted a thousand pounds yeah like, it's not know. worth it <laughs> it's really not worth it honestly even if you so, download like, a trial for a software and you keep uninstalling and downloading it again just to like you know keep experimenting and then later on if you want to purchase it then go for it because then you'll know that you're confident using the software and don't just like splash out a grand on something that you don't even know how to use and you don't know mm, if you're mm. going to continue using it and everything. Yeah, absolutely, man. That is Good the way. stuff. That is the way. How how are we looking for time anyway? How are we doing? We're currently offer? on twenty six minutes. Twenty six. Yes. Well, I think you know what. I think that's been this is this could be a good place to end. Yeah, it's been great. We managed to cover think, a lot and everything. Yeah. I think we've covered everything we need to cover. I'd love to obviously speak uh, a lot more. There's a lot of stuff I'd like to dig into more, but yeah. I think for our first one, this has been pretty good. Yeah, I've, pretty... I've really enjoyed it. It's really good, man. Thank you for having me, bruv. Yes, good stuff. Well, um, to everyone or <laughs> someone who's watching, <laughs> thank you for watching. And um, yeah, like uh, we touched on um, the, the the subject of fear, and that's something which me and Rafi would like to talk about in future con. Yeah. Uh, con Future compa- uh, compasts? <laughs> compasts. Compasts. Pretty good. Future <laughs> pretty good. Podcasts. Pretty good English, yeah. um, so yeah, uh, I guess until then, I've been James and I've been Raf. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Before we go though, we just want to promote that we have a Twitter page that you can follow, which is oh, don't laugh at the handle, but I couldn't change it to anything else. It's at Podcast Snippet. It will be in the link in the description, and you can find an annotation on the screen as well. Um, of course, if you enjoyed our content and if you enjoyed this podcast, then subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications, so you um. Don't miss an upload from us and you can stay up to date with all our stuff. Um, leave a like, comment below what other topics you want to talk about, you want us to talk about even. And that's about it really, yeah. We hope awesome. you enjoyed it. Right, wicked. Cheers guys. See you in a bit.